Over the next few minutes, we're going to talk about the application of a theoretical framework to guide a quantitative research study. Dr. Zeidler in 2007 created a handout called What is a Theoretical Framework? She provided a great example of how a doctoral student's application of a theoretical framework guided her quantitative research. And I want to summarize this example for you. A doctoral student, who we'll call Kate, is interested in the importance of questioning in either a primary or secondary classroom. Through a literature review, Kate finds that the research on the effectiveness of questioning strategies is rather ambiguous. Some researchers purport that questioning at higher cognitive levels have led to higher achievement than questioning at the lower cognitive levels. However, other researchers have found that there's no difference between the level of achievement and type of questioning. Kate questions, why is this? Surely there must be some explanation. So she goes back and does more research. And on, upon further research, she comes across the work of someone she's heard about before during her doctoral coursework, and that's Pitaget. Pitaget discusses the level of cognitive development. He suggested that the level of instruction needs to match the level of cognitive development of a student in order for instruction to be effective. She asked, could it be? Could it be that a student's cognitive level influences their learning via the type of questions they're asked? Kate heads back to the library to do some more research. She searches the literature on cognitive development and its relationship to achievement. She looks for the research that uses Piaget as a theoretical framework. As she dives deeper and deeper into the literature, she recognizes two themes that emerge. First of all, the research on effective questioning establishes the fact that more research is needed to investigate this problem, especially given the ambiguity of the results. A few researchers have suggested that cognitive development may influence questioning and the level of learning. The research on cognitive development, she recognizes, provides a basis for the potential understanding of this phenomenon of questioning. For it suggests that it may be possible that students of different cognitive levels are affected differently by different levels of questions. This gap in the literature that she discovers, as well as the theory, guide her to propose two hypotheses that she really hopes that she can test or examine for her dissertation. First of all, she hypothesizes that both high and low cognitive level students will benefit from the high and low cognitive questions as opposed to no questions at all. However, only students categorized as high cognitive level will benefit from high cognitive level questionings. And they will benefit from these high cognitive level questions better than low level questions. Through this example of Kate, a doctoral student, I hope that you have learned how you can apply theory and how theory can, number one, focus research inquiry, number two, guide the inquiry, as well as the identification of the variables and even the grouping of those variables. How it can, three, predict the expected relationships between variables and finally, propose a potential explanation for previous ambiguous research results.